Ladies and gentlemen, the Village and Pillage update for Minecraft Bedrock has been released. This is Minecraft Bedrock version 1.11. If you don't know what the Bedrock edition is, it's the one that you can buy from the Windows 10 store. You can play on mobile devices, on Xbox One and on the Nintendo Switch. My name is Sliced Lime, and I'm here to guide you through the changes in this version. And this is the Village and Pillage update, so let's start by looking at villages. You might have seen some of this before if you've played with experimental gameplay turned on, or if you've watched my previous update video. The new village generation system has been moved out of experimental gameplay and into the game proper. All of the villages are now generated with the new system, and each village gets its style depending on which biome it generates in, for plains, desert, snowy, savanna and taiga. While there are bound to be some differences, the systems are also bound to be similar between Bedrock and the Java Edition, and I've made a very long and comprehensive video explaining this system and showing all of the different pieces for Minecraft Java Edition 1.14, that is, the corresponding Java Edition for the Village and Pillage update. So if you want to see every single little detail about how these villages are generated, please click on the card on the video right now, it'll take you to my Village Generation video. If you want to finish watching this first and then watch that later, there's also a link in the video description. Together with the new villages, we also have new villagers. Villagers now get clothing as a combination of their profession and their biome. This makes villagers look distinct in plains, desert, savanna, taiga and snowy biomes, but there are also villager styles for swamps and jungles. There are no villages in swamps or jungles, but if you do get villagers to breed inside of a swamp or a jungle, then the villagers you get will have a swamp or jungle style. They also have a little pouch in their belt, which indicates their level. As opposed to Minecraft Java Edition, this displays only three versions, one for minimum level, one for maximum level, and one for in-between. Another difference to note is that villagers in Bedrock Minecraft spawn directly as a random profession. Together with this, the zombified version of villagers now also have biome and profession related skins. Villagers now also have beds that they sleep in at night, and during the day they will visit their job sites. While they're going about their business, their pathfinding has been greatly improved, and they will close doors behind them properly. Another noteworthy bug that has been fixed is that farmer villagers will no longer produce infinite amounts of bread. Different types of villagers work at different point of interest blocks in the daytime. A villager becomes an armorer to work at a blast furnace, a butcher to work at a smoker, a cartographer to work at a cartography table, a cleric to work at a brewing stand, a farmer to work at a composter, a fisherman to work at a barrel, a fletcher to work at a fletching table, a leather worker to work at a cauldron a librarian to work at a lectern, a mason to work at a stone cutter, a shepherd to work at a loom, a toolsmith to work at a smithing table, or a weaponsmith to work at a grindstone. Another thing to note with the new villagers is that they no longer care about doors to breed, instead they care about the number of beds available. A final word about this is that villagers in your existing worlds will convert to these new villagers when you load your world up in this new version. There's one exception to that, and that is if they are part of a template world. Of course, as villagers do trades, the trading has been updated as well. Each villager now has a level and experience shown in the trading interface. Trading with a villager now not only gives you experience, but also the villager. And once the villager XP bar has filled up, it will level up into the next level. This will open up the next round of trades. One difference here between Java Edition and Bedrock is that on this version, you can see the next level of trades before you unlock them. Another difference is that trades lock up quicker on this version than on Java Edition. After as little as four trades, a villager will run out of stock and they can only restock by working at their worksite. Again, while there may be some minor differences between the versions, the set of trades are broadly the same between Java Edition and Bedrock, and I've made a comprehensive guide to all of the different trades offered by all of the different types of villagers. If you want to see that video, it's available on a card on the video right now, or later as a link in the video description. Another thing that has been brought out of experimental gameplay and into the normal game is the Wandering Trader. The Wandering Trader is a villager-like mob that will appear at a villager's gathering site and then will stay around for 2-3 to in-game days. 
With them on their journey, they have two trader llamas. The wandering trader, unsurprisingly, has a bunch of trades. And these trades are different from the normal villager trades, offering a wide selection of materials. All of these materials are always sales, so make sure you bring a lot of emeralds. For one emerald, you can buy ferns, sugar canes, pumpkins, all types of flowers except with the roses, wheat, beetroot, pumpkin, and melon seeds, vines, both type of mushrooms, gunpowder, three of any dye, two lily pads, four red sands, or eight blocks of sand. For two emeralds, you can buy sea pickles or glowstone. For three emeralds, kelp, cactus, all types of coral blocks, podzol or packed ice. For four emeralds, slime balls. For five emeralds, nautilus shells, all types of saplings or fish buckets with tropical fish or puffer fish. And for six emeralds, a wandering trader might sell you blue ice. On the pillage side of the village and pillage update, there are a number of new things in this version. Pillager outposts have been moved from experimental gameplay into the game properly. Those are outposts that spawn in all of the same biomes that villages can spawn in. And they are a home to pillagers. So pillagers are now a part of the game properly. One thing to note is that at the top of the tower, you can find a loot chest. Some of the pillagers carry a banner. Killing that mob will grant you a new effect called Bad Omen. This is counted as a negative effect that can be removed by drinking a bucket of milk. Normally it doesn't have any ill effects, but if you walk into a village with this effect on, you will trigger a raid. A raid is a boss-like siege event in which multiple waves of enemies will spawn outside the village and run in to murder the unsuspecting villagers, and it's up to you to stop them. The waves of the raid will become progressively more difficult as the raid goes on, and can be made up of pillagers and ravagers as well as witches and the mobs from the mansions, vindicators and evokers. Watch out for those ravagers, they have 50 hearts of health, so they'll take quite some time to wear down. If you do manage to defend the village against the raid, you will get another new effect, it's called the village hero effect. This effect gives you discounts on trades. Let's talk about other mobs, but let's stay on the theme of villagers. There are changes to how cats spawn in villages. Cats will now respawn in villages and it's based on the number of beds in the village. The number of cats that can spawn is one quarter of the number of beds around, with a maximum cap of 10 cats per village. And another change to cats is that tamed cats that get into bed with a player will now sleep on their side. Some other random mob fixes? Underwater mobs no longer spawn on land. And mobs can now pathfind their way through waterlogged blocks such as seagrass. When you kill a shulker with looting, it now has a chance to drop more shulker shells. Let's talk about blocks and items. The remaining point of interest blocks that were added without functionality in the previous version now have a functionality. That is the cartography table, which provides an easier way to copy and scale maps. It also has a new functionality, where if you put a glass pane and a map into the cartography table, you produce a locked map that will no longer update. Another new block is the grindstone. The grindstone can be used to combine two damaged tools into one repaired tool, and it can also remove enchants from items, which refunds some of the experience to the player. The barrel is a new chest, but it doesn't have an opening animation. This also means that it has no restrictions on how it can be opened, so it can be opened even when there are blocks above it. The smoker is a new type of furnace. It cooks only food, but it does so twice as fast as a normal furnace, using up fuel twice as fast. Another furnace variant is the blast furnace. It only smelts ores, but it does so twice as fast and uses up fuel twice as fast. This new block is the composter. It's a container that you can add layers upon layers of crops into, and once it is filled up, it will produce bone meal. The stone cutter is a crafting block. It is used to convert stone into other types of stone items. For instance, stairs, slabs, and walls, as well as derivate block types. This also means that you can more efficiently make stairs, where you get one stair block for each input stone block. The last two point of interest blocks are the smithing table and the fletching table. The functionality for these are not in this version, they will be coming at a later point. One more thing to mention about the point of interest blocks, lecterns now emit a redstone signal when you turn the page. Other new blocks and blocks that have been moved out of experimental mode in this version, one is the bell. They ring when you interact with them, or if they are powered by redstone. 
If you ring a bell, all the villagers around will run into their houses. The campfire has been updated in this version. It is a fireplace with no fire spread, and its visuals have been updated to the latest textures in this version. It also now supports cooking items and emits smoke particles. And just like in Java Edition, those particles will stay longer and rise higher if you place the campfire on top of a hay block. Sweet berries are another new added item. These were experimental in the previous version, but they are fully in the game in this one. They're a new type of food that give you one bar of hunger restored when you eat them. Sweet berries can be planted into bushes, and the bushes can grow new berries. Sweet berry bushes can be found in taiga biomes. They also have thorns, so if you try to move through them, it will hurt. Let's move on to gameplay. If you choose a skin from a skin pack, then that selected skin will automatically apply if you play the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft on another device. When you play scaffolding, the amount of blocks that can be placed out from the initial support pillar have been increased, and you can now climb vines and ladders using the jump button again. And if you walked far away from spawn, about 65,000 blocks, then you can start falling through the world. That's fixed in this version. When smelting items in a furnace, blast furnace or smoker, the experience will now be stored even if the resulting items are pulled out with a hopper. When you rename an item in an anvil, the act of renaming no longer adds a cost to the item. And banners can once again be copied in the crafting grid. Let's talk about some world generation changes. Bamboo is now generated in jungles, and there's a new bamboo jungle biome where bamboo generates more densely. Mineshaft generation has been fixed in this version, they will no longer generate in a giant cluster and it will more closely resemble those found in the Java edition of the game. And Mesa Plateau biomes now generate more like those in the Java edition as well. Let's talk achievements, a number of new ones and some updates in this version. New achievements, plethora of cats for befriending 20 stray cats, kill the beast for defeating a ravager. Bilo, sell high for trading for the best possible price. Disenchanted for using a grindstone to get experience from an enchanted item. We're being attacked for triggering a pillager raid. Sound the alarm for ringing a bell with a hostile enemy in the village. I've got a bad feeling about this for killing a pillager captain. And the treasure hunter achievement has been fixed so it can be unlocked when using a treasure map in your offhand slot. Visual changes in this version. There are more new textures in this version. The previous version had a bunch of the new textures for the texture update, but this one includes even more of them. If you want a rundown of all of the changed textures, there's a video about that on my channel. It shows off all of the differences between the old style of textures and the new ones in the Java edition, but those are the textures that you'll find in the Bedrock edition as well. There was a bug in the previous version where particles didn't appear when you mined blocks that's fixed in this version. And leather horse armor is now properly colored. Also, if you held a shields in an offhand, then it was held upside down that's fixed in this version. Some user interface and accessibility fixes in this version. Text to speech can now be enabled to read in-game chat. And the UI screen reader can be enabled to say the name of the interface controls and their current state, and you do this inside of the game's setting. Some of the portions of the game's menus have also been darker to make text easier to read with better contrast. And on the Xbox One, when you're writing in a book, the on-screen keyboard no longer obscures the text that you're writing. A bunch of technical fixes in this version as well, I'll mention some of the most important ones. Some performance issues when using selectors with commands have been fixed, and the replace item command now takes selector arguments into account when replacing items in the offhand slot. And that brings us to the end of this overview of Minecraft Bedrock Edition 1.11, the village and pillage update. This version has now been out for a little more than a day, which means that it should have had time to reach all types of devices. If you want to upgrade to this version, go into wherever you normally update apps on your device. That would be the Windows 10 Store, your App Store on your mobile device, or into the game menu on your Xbox, for instance. There, you should find this version ready to download and update. And that's all from me for this time. I hope you found this update video useful, and if you did, please help me out return and leave a like. My name is Sliced Lime. thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.